Hello! So, today is the next episode of my Spanish Media Diaries, in which I talk about content that I have been consuming lately that was made or produced or whatever in Spanish. So, no translations of things, although I like translations of things, but the aim here is immersing in uh, Spanish language content. So, my uh, perennial disclaimer here is that I am not capable of being as discerning in Spanish as I am in English, so I do try to be fairly conscientious about the type of media, the type of messages and themes that I consume, but I may not be capable of telling if something is problematic. Uh, so if you see that I am talking about something that's problematic and I don't say anything about it, definitely leave a comment and I will pin it or something. So we will start with movies because I only have two to talk about today. The first one is Museo and this was actually a movie that uh, was used for a mini immersion weekend. So if you are looking for additional ways to immerse, mini immersion is a great way to go. So it's a community started by uh, Julianne at Leafling Learns and she hosts weekend events basically and they are great. But in, uh, in a past mini immersion, uh, we watched Museo, which is a Mexican film about two guys who are like in their early 30s or something like that who steal indigenous artifacts from a museum and it's in like the 80s or something. I believe it's based on a true story. I didn't dislike this movie at all, but I also didn't love it. Like I would say I was just fairly neutral about it. I think I gave it like three stars. I think it tried to have really interesting things to say about, you know, stolen art and colonization and that sort of thing, but to me, I didn't feel like it followed through on any of the things that it started to talk about, so... I don't know, maybe I just didn't understand it well enough. Um, the next movie is Makiyami Otra Vez. I don't know why I'm struggling so much to say that. Uh, basically, you are following um, three or four makeup artists who are trying to get work doing like weddings and events and that sort of thing. And they have kind of personal history of conflict and you know, between the three of them. And yeah, it was like very random, not anything like incredible, but the uh, like costumes and makeup and everything were so cool that it was very entertaining for me to watch. And yeah, it was, it was fine. Books, we will run through pretty quickly. I do have a book channel. So if you want details on books, you can always check my monthly wrap ups there. But um, you know, the Spanish books are just uh, sprinkled in there at random, so I will talk about the books that I read quickly here. The first one was I listened to the book Rojo by Carlos Sisi, and this is a vampire novel, kind of more like a zombie novel in a lot of ways, in that it is very post-apocalyptic, so we are seeing the initial kind of infection, and then we're following a couple characters as they try to you know, travel, stay safe, find a safe place. I did really like this in certain aspects, but it was also pretty sexist. Like, not even pretty sexist. It was very sexist. Um, so I am listening to the second book now, so I will have thoughts about that in the future. But um, if that's something that you can't really tolerate in a book, then I would skip this one. It really annoys me, but... I did keep listening because I did kind of like the story. I read Hija de la Fortuna, which is another Isabel Allende book. This is the first book in the trilogy, loosely speaking, that the uh, House of the Spirits is in. This one I did not like as much as House of the Spirits, but I did really, really like it. So we are following one of the ancestors of the people in the House of the Spirits. She is of at least partially indigenous descent, and she is adopted by white English people in Chile and raised by them, and then eventually she ends up going to California for the gold rush. And so the first part of it is set in Chile, and that part wasn't super engaging to me. But once she starts the journey to California, I did feel much more engaged and I still found Isabel Allende's writing so, so engaging and her characters are very rich. Um, so yeah, I listened to Stravagantia, which is a middle grade-ish 
fantasy book by Laura Gallego. Um, this one is significantly shorter than a lot of her other works, <laughs> so the audiobook was about like 10 hours or so, which is perfect for me. And this was really fun and entertaining. I really liked it. We are following a young girl who is kind of obsessed with this boy. She has a, you know, major crush on him and he is moving away. And so at his going away party, she's, you know, finally trying to get up the nerve to tell him how she feels and everything. And he ends up disappearing. And so she follows him into this fantasy world and then has to go on a quest there to try to find him and rescue him and... Yeah, it was cute. It was not like my favorite book of all time, but yeah, I would consider rereading it to be honest. El Mapa de los Anelos. This is a like contemporary new adult maybe novel. And so we are following a girl in her early 20s whose sister has died and she is kind of trying to put herself back together. And she ends up meeting up with this boy in his 20s and they have to complete this um, game or list of things to do called the map of longings or something like that that her sister put together for her to do to kind of help heal and so um, there is romance and it is kind of a, a thinking about life kind of thing but it was a little bit juvenile uh, a little bit cringy but it was okay I, it was kind of like john green plus romance. Yeah. I listened to El Tono. I forget the name of the guy who wrote it, but this is like a kind of philosophical terror novel, <laughs> in my opinion. This is like a novella, I think. The audiobook was like four hours long, and we are following a man who um, stalks this woman ends up in a relationship with her and then ultimately kills her and so we are he's telling us his story from prison and so you know that sounds like it would be like a thriller or something but it's kind of not really like he's just telling us his thoughts and narrating this whole thing for us so it was horrifying to me like hearing the mind of someone like that but you know again very like neutrally told so i think this is kind of a modern classic maybe it was compared to like camus and stuff so yeah las malas i did talk about this um in a vlog and i loved this book this is a short um i believe semi-autobiographical novel about a trans woman in argentina who is what is called a travesti which is like a very specific trans identity in Argentina and I think elsewhere in South America and so she is telling the story of her community that she found of um, travestis mostly who worked as prostitutes and the incredible community that they built it was you know beautiful at times extremely sad because of obviously the ways that they were treated and marginalized and uh, victimized in society, but also so beautiful. And yes, I definitely want to read everything else that she has written as well. And then I just finished the other day a short uh, children's audiobook called La Piedra Verde, and this is part of a children's series called Chano y Oscar, I think. I will have the link for that below, but. The first two books, I think, are free, and they are in multiple languages as well, which is great. Um, this was a cute story, so we're following these twins named uh, Chano and Oscar, I think, who find a, um, a meteor and are then trying to uncover the mystery of the meteor or something. Um, so yeah, there are more books in the series and I will probably listen to them when I need something quick and easy and yeah, it was cute. Okay, so for podcasts, so the first two are just because I finally have enough space on my phone 
to be able to download Spotify again <laughs> because when I had my old phone, I could not have very many apps. So I had to be like brutal and I did not use Spotify enough to keep it. So several Spotify exclusive podcasts I wasn't really able to listen to, but now I can. So one of them is very, very famous and it's called Entiende Tu Mente. And I had listened to some of this before because a lot of their archives before they went Spotify exclusive are you know, available, but they are doing much more things now. They do um, this segment where they talk about movies or, you know, TV or that sort of thing. So that's really interesting. It's basically, I mean, the it's in the title, Understanding Your Mind. It's all about different, like, mental health type topics, and it's very interesting. The other one is a podcast by someone that I follow on Instagram called Traguitos Literarios, and it is two uh, bookstagrammers who talk about books. So the other three are kind of on a similar theme that I have been trying to really follow accounts and listen to podcasts and such from people of varying identities in the countries that I am consuming content from. So people of different, you know, racial or ethnic backgrounds, uh, disabled people, that sort of thing. Like that's something that I very much try to do in English, so it certainly makes sense to do in Spanish, especially since I know even less about these issues as they pertain directly to these countries, so I even more need this, you know, knowledge. The first podcast is Afro Chingonas, and this is, uh, I believe, three black women in Mexico, and so they talk about various topics uh, related to uh, life in Mexico, life as a black person or a black woman in Mexico, and just different, I think their latest one was about like toxic activism, they talk about all kinds of different things, and it is very, very good. I also subscribe to their Patreon. Then uh, we have No Hay Negros in El Tibet, which is similarly by three black people who live in uh, Spain, and this one, I don't think it's active right now, they do only have one season, but um, I've only listened to a couple of them so far because I just found this one. But it has been so, so interesting um, so far, and I also follow creators on Instagram as well. Then I have um, Africa in Un Click, which is um, kind of an educational short-form podcast about different African countries, history of you know, uh, empires in Africa prior to colonization or during colonization. Again, not a ton of episodes out yet, but they do seem to still be active. And this is a very, very well, like, produced, done podcast. So then I do want to start throwing in some Instagram accounts that I follow. I really probably spend quite a fair amount of time watching reels in Spanish or reading posts and that sort of thing. So I feel like it is one of the best ways to see how Spanish is actually being used in the wild. And, you know, there are always accounts that are educating people on specific topics in, like, any language aimed at native speakers, so you can always look for those as well. One of which that I have found is Vet Mexico. They just make reels talking about various things related to pets, so they'll go around and ask everyone in the vet office, like, what's one thing that dogs are allergic to or something like that. And so it can be really good for getting specific pet or animal related vocabulary. Two kind of news slash culture related ones are AJ plus Spanish. No, <laughs> AJ plus Espanol and uh, CCCB underscore Barcelona. And so both of these are like organizations pages that have a lot of videos and text posts and that sort of thing. A blind um, creator that I follow is named Andrea Bergavi, Bergavi, I think. And a deaf creator who posts content in Mexican Sign Language is Priscilla underscore LSM. So definitely check all of those out to see if you want to follow any of them and uh, let me know what you've been enjoying in the comments and I will see you in the next video.